In the beginning of the series, um, there was actually some vandalism that happened to the church, and we were talking to the pastor, and he said that something like that almost always happens anytime they start a Revelation seminar or a Bible seminar. So, so it begins. Our journey over to Brownsville, Texas. We find ourselves in a little airport in Little Rock, Arkansas. Now, our friend evangelist David Machado lives in Arkansas, and we had the great opportunity to board this plane together, to do this trip together. So we find ourselves at the airport trying to get some exercise done, trying to get some work done, all that kind of stuff. And uh, time flew, and before you knew it, we found ourselves in the aircraft flying over to Texas. It was a quick flight, not much to talk about. There was two, two airplanes that we boarded to get there. Um, it was nice. We got some reading done. We got some other things done. It was cool to be on a trip together, you know? kind of a new experience for us. But we landed in Brownsville, Texas safely, met a member of the church, he drove us to our Airbnb, and the next day um, we had a little bit of time before the evening where we found ourselves getting prepared to do the dry run meeting. Got an angry look at it. Volto. Oh. Felix. Oi. Felix for See a you dog. guys. Nice dog. So I guess the question is, what is a dry run meeting? We'll have Dave explain. Dave. Can you explain to me what we're doing here? I'm trying to do a dry run. What's a dry run? It's a run that's not wet. <laughs> it all say. Well, that wasn't a very strong explanation, but in short, a dry run meeting allows all of us to get together as a team and to figure out what we are doing. So we test the audio, we test the video stuff, make sure all that is working. We assign people positions and jobs and tasks to do during the duration of the series. And of course, this is a good opportunity for us to introduce ourselves uh, to them. A lot of times we go to places and they don't know anything about us. Um, that's my family there. Um, and so I wanted to introduce myself to you all. Ernie is an audio engineer, he went to school, so he makes sure that she sounds good all the time. So the Strider One meeting helps to facilitate um, all of these things all at once. And it prepares not only the members to be ready for what's coming next, but also gets us prepared as we go forward as a team. We pray especially for visitors, those who have received flyers and personal invitations that you would please remind them, guide them in making the ultimate decision for you. We pray that you would please keep us healthy, both physically and spiritually, to keep us safe. Lord, we just want to thank you for this awesome opportunity to be co-laborers with you. Please bless us and guide us, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Today's our opening night. It is April 29, 2022. Yeah, so tonight we're going to be talking about what is truth. There's billions of people on planet Earth. Every single person doesn't have the exact same definition of what truth is. So tonight we're going to uncover what the Bible describes and defines as truth. Hopefully, it will set you free. I'm working on some audio stuff. Like most places I go, a lot of the church is set up audio is, it's not done super professional. So it's like suffering and uh, this place is no different, but it seems like I got all things working. I'm gonna try one more thing. It's not super necessary, but it will help the church in the long run. So I'm just trying to do that now while I have the time. Yeah. The problem is I need two of these cables and I only have one. So if I could find another one of these cables, that'd be good. But I'm not really finding any. Okay friends, so my name is Marlon. We are here ready to start our seminar tonight with David Machado. And uh, we are so excited because we know that the Holy Spirit is working in our midst and we are looking forward to see everything the Lord will do here in this church. So please keep us in your prayers. Thank you. So our opening weekend is a very busy weekend. We not only have a presentation on Friday night, but on Saturday we actually have two presentations. Um, one of them is in, yeah, at five o'clock, and then we have this big international food festival that tends to bring in a lot of people because we've had, we, we advertise in our flyers, we have different kind of foods like Indian food, Mexican food, we had Brazilian food, Italian food, and people were just coming to one eating that. And afterwards, we were able to close off the night with a presentation at 7 p.m. where I shared how I came face to face with the leader of the Mexican mafia. And I just think overall, it was an incredible weekend, um, incredible day. and. Lord really blessed. The first two nights of our opening weekend, after both evening messages are over on Friday night and Saturday night, we have debriefing meetings where all the leaders of the different departments come together at the end of the night and we all discuss what went well, what didn't go well, 
what can we work on. If there's any issues that need to be addressed, we, we deal with it in the beginning so it won't just drag on throughout the course of the meetings. Yeah. So here we find ourselves pretty much at the middle of the entire event and uh, we could be filming more, I could be showing you things every single night, but it's all kind of the same. You get into a routine, you know, um, evening meetings, but it's about this time, the halfway mark, where you start to really get to know the people that have been attending the meetings and we have a we have a quite a mixture of people here at this church. Some that, you know, had no religious background at all. Some people are coming from different walks of faith. And of course, we also have a mixture of people that have been in the faith for a long time, but maybe have regressed in many ways. And this is rekindling their first love, their, their first relationship with God. So it's it's been quite amazing. I remember telling you guys that Los Fresnos is mostly a Hispanic uh, demographic. And here in Brownsville, it is no different. But the church itself is made up of a lot of different cultures people from India, people from Brazil, the Philippines, Italians, of course the Hispanic uh, culture is here too. So, But as it seems right now, it seems like those that are attending, they're taking the messages and they're, they're walking in with an open mind. So I guess we'll continue to pray, see how the rest of this series is going, but for right now, I think things are good. Help us to leave this place encouraged to know that the victory is already won. And we are claiming that today. What happened yesterday? Well, yesterday was the message about baptism. So David Machado made an, an altar call. And by God's grace, I have a few people coming forth. I think like 11, 12 people mm -hmm. indicating that they want to surrender their life to Jesus. And we are celebrating every step of the way. But now in the afternoon, the message is very important. We're going to be talking about the church, the true church of God. And so next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we don't have any meetings here. We don't have any seven o'clock meetings, but pastor and I are dedicating those three days to meeting with you each individually to talk about your baptism, your future baptism, to talk about the steps. We're not about rushing anybody. We want everybody to have the confidence and the assurance that God is leading them. And so we're not going to test you. We're not going to drill you. We're just going to see where God's leading you in this decision and prayerfully go through it with you. Does that make sense, everybody? Amen. So next week on- I mean, you've seen me come back home um, each night after a baptismal consultation, a full day. I'm talking from like one to nine o'clock mm -hmm. and I'm drained. I mean, people are crying, telling me about their struggles, their issues. But ultimately, it's my favorite part of the whole experience simply because I get to see real faith in action. And when you hear these people's testimonies and their faith journey, what they're willing to surrender for the Lord um, because they found truth. It is just reviving. It's just incredible. And it, it truly just makes this whole experience worth it. I mean, I, this year alone, I've been three, about three months away from my son and my wife. And not many people know how that feels like, you know, not having to see your son, your newborn son or your wife all the time. And it's tough. But what's, what makes it worth it is seeing people make decisions for Christ. Case in point, we have an 84-year-old lady who's getting baptized for the first time. She was raised Catholic and um, she's been coming to these meetings and she's saying, I've learned more truth in these meetings than I have my whole life, 84 years. We're wrapping up with close to 20 decisions for baptism. We still have one last appeal this weekend, um, tomorrow. Um, and we got an exciting weekend ahead of us with three presentations, one on the United States and Bible prophecy on heaven and such. But I've just been so blessed with this series and I'm really looking forward to seeing how God's going to bless. Oh Lord, it's so good here, Father, that we don't, we don't really want to go home. Oh Lord, we, I would love if from here we could, we could go straight to our home with you in heaven, Father. It would be so awesome if we could do that. We would, we would love to stay here in this time, in this holy atmosphere forever. But we have to go, Lord. We have a work to do before you come. We need to get ready. We need to get our family ready, Lord. Our loved ones, our children, our spouses. There's so much work to do, Lord. And this is a small church, so simple. There's nothing sophisticated, not, nothing so uh, attractive about, the, about us. But we feel God's presence here in this place. 
And we praise you, Father, for all the miracles we have seen through all these three weeks. For the people who are baptized and those who are, who are learning and they are uh, uh, considering getting baptized, getting ready and prepared for baptism, Father. We just want to ask you that you will seal each one of them under your righteous right hand. Protected from the attacks of the enemy who will do everything to bring obstacles in their lives. Please bless your church. Continue to bless David Machado, Laura, Ernie, and this beautiful ministry. And many people, Lord, will come to you through this ministry that they will, they will lose account of so many people who they're going to be in heaven. We ask the Lord that as we leave this place, we're not, we're not going to be from your presence. You will always surround us with your glory and graces. We ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Time for bed, Dave. Time for bed. Time for bed.